changing agro scenarios in India. Agrarian to BT Let's have a review. India is the seventh largest country in the world in terms of its geographical size and second in world population. India has a large and diverse agriculture and is one of the world's leading producers. It is also a major consumer with an expanding population feeding nearly 1.1 billion people. In India, farmers traditionally followed agrarian cultivation. They depend on nature for yield and often met their needs with the resources available. They cultivated crops with diverse variety depending on season and rotated crops for keeping the soil fertile. It is not a violent red revolution like that of the Soviets, nor is it a white revolution like that of the Shah of Iran. I call it the Green Revolution. These were the words quoted by former USAID director William God. The Green Revolution Initiative 1965 provided the much needed increase in production to make India self-sufficient in footprints, thus improving agriculture in India. The Green Revolution nearly quadrupled the production of rice and wheat, transforming India's fertile areas into granaries. Since then, India has no longer been dependent on the foreign grain and food aid shipments from the United States. With increased production, India repaid her loans while progressing on the path to self-sufficiency. Few decades down the road, when need turned to greed, it is evident that the benefits of the Green Revolution are associated with unanticipated harmful effects of chemicals. Pesticide companies blame farmers for not adhering to prescribed quantities and not using protective gear. Workers who spray the chemicals blame landlords for not investing in protection and companies for not properly informing them of the dangers of exposure. Farmers claim it is greedy dealers who push them to spray more and also blame the government's failure to change its policies. Such vicious chain reactions brought about the harmful side effects of the Green Revolution. In spite of such lame arguments, let's look at an in-depth analysis of the real picture. Let's take a look at the best associated losses in crops. 14% of the total agro-production. The losses that has occurred has been immense. 84% in cotton, 83% in rice, 74% in potato, 59% in maize, 58% in soybean, and 52% in wheat. Alas, farmer suicides signal larger agrarian crisis. Our nation faces a potential problem. This has eventually led to a drastic decline of pesticide companies. The statistics being shown cut a sorry figure. This has left the common farmer in no man's land and has now here to go. Such a state of poverty has led them in search and need of new technologies such as insect resistant Bt crops. Realizing the importance of pest resistance Bt cotton and its success around the world, Mahiko took the initiative introducing this technology into India in collaboration with Monsanto. The Department of Biotechnology, Government of India permits Bt cotton which has a successful chronology from the year 1995 in India. Cotton is the most important commercial crop of our country, contributing up to 75% of the total raw material needs of the textile industry and provides employment to about 60 million people. Cotton cultivation in India covers an area of approximately 9 million hectares, representing about one quarter of the global area of 35 million hectares under cotton. The picture shows a clear statistics of BT cotton progress in India. Tamil Nadu Agricultural University is one of the member of RCGM, Regional Committee Genetically Modified Crops. 
It conducts various multi-location trails for biosafety for Bt crops. It also works in incorporating Bt genes in its own varieties. Let us have a review from a pioneer of Bt, Prof. P. Balasubramanian, former director, Center of Plant Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University, who understood the need for Bt crops. The in-depth strategy involves the cloning and transfer of the genes encoding the toxic crystal gamma endotoxin protein from the soil bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis and screening the putative transgenic for genes which has the ability to control the ballworms at the early stages of crop growth effectively. When cry proteins are ingested by insects, they are dissolved in the alkaline juices present in the mid-gut lumen. The gut proteases process them hydrolytically to release the core toxic fragments. The toxic fragments are believed to bind to a specific high affinity receptor present in the brush border of the mid-cut epithelial cells. As a result, the brush border membranes develop pores, most likely non-specific in nature, which causes their swelling of mid-cut and larva stops, due to which pH is lowered and bacterial spore starts germinating, which causes the death of the larva called septosemia. BT technology has redeemed lives in a unique manner as in the case of cotton. But this technology has not got the support to expand to other crops such as brinjal. Such technologies should not be made into controversial issues. Rather, they need to be promoted for better livelihood and sustainment. If India intends to avoid another humanitarian crisis in the near future, it has got to address these issues now. The need of the hour for India is a farming system that is sustainable and environmentally